Transcripts and recordings of the podcast may not be used for any purpose without the direct written permission of the podcast owner. Welcome to Light It Up, a podcast about resilient women balancing motherhood, their careers, personal lives, and all of the challenges that come along with being a superwoman. Each week, you'll be motivated to take action to lead, inspire, transform, and empower. Now, here's your host, Dr. Regina Mashira. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Light It Up. I am your host, Dr. Ajina Mashira. I am so excited about this week's episode. As you can see, I am not in my normal in-home studio in Chicago. I am actually on location in Atlanta, Georgia. I am traveling um, here for a conference, um, which is related to my day job, which as you all know, is in the field of higher education. I decided to still record an episode for this week because I did not want to end the month of, uh, no, uh, geez, I didn't want to end the month of April without um, coming on just to chat with you all for a few moments. I thought uh, last week, my plan was to have a guest. However, things change and we're just going to roll with the punches. And I thought that it would be best to have another one of those solo chats. Um, and really what I wanted to talk to you all about this week is, um, sort of based upon a conversation that I actually had a few days ago when I got to Atlanta uh, with my cousin. And um, we were talking about so many uh, different things in terms of family, um, you know, what's going on in the world, raising children. And um, one of the topics that we discussed uh, was, of course, um, and I shouldn't say of course, but we discussed social media and its impact on us as a society. Uh, so often we talk about the impact that social media has on our youth, um, but we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about the impact that it also has on adults. And uh, my cousin, uh, Alfred Terry, he lives in Atlanta. He was, first of all, gracious enough to pick me up from the airport and we had an opportunity to have brunch. I got a chance to spend time with his family and then he brought me over um, to the hotel. And if anybody knows anything about Atlanta, Georgia's traffic, you know that they are notorious for having the worst uh, traffic jams ever. So even on a weekend, on a nice Sunday day, traffic, uh, was a little tight, but, um, what, what we, uh, kind of talked about was the fact that, um, Alfred has, uh, has removed himself from social media. We'll just say that for, lack of uh, better terminology, um, but took a break from social media. And um, I was just sharing uh, with him as we were talking about some of the different things that have been going on in Chicago, as far as our youth is concerned. And, you know, last week I talked about parenting and our responsibility to our children um, to actually parent, uh, to help um, minimize some of the the issues that uh, we've been experiencing in terms of uh, some of our youth not not showing respect for rules or themselves or for other people. Um, but as far as social media is concerned, we have seen the effects, or we are now witnessing the effects that social media has had on the mental health 
of our young people. Um, but the same really holds true for adults. So often when we're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok for that matter, um, we're looking at what's going on in the lives of other people. And it often leads us to compare ourselves to other people and what other people are doing um, because there's this false sense of reality and we've turned into the society of individuals who are um, who are more concerned with getting likes and responses from people. Everyone wants to be a social media influencer um, these days. And that's just not uh, reality. Um, but social media really is, um, it, 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 the activities on social media essentially causes us to have this addictive uh, behavior. Um, but that addictive behavior also is associated with anxiety and depression and even physical ailments. Um, so there's research that's been done. This isn't anything new that I'm sharing, but I just kind of um, wanted to bring this back to the forefront. Um, but in terms of uh, the research that's been done, 69% of adults and 81% of teens in the U.S. use social media. And so that essentially is placing a, a tremendous amount of the population at an increased risk of feeling anxious, depressed, or ill over social media use. Um, I can tell you, um, case in point, a couple of weeks ago, Easter weekend, as a matter of fact, my youngest daughter and I, we traveled out of town to visit her siblings, go on a girl's trip to Myrtle Beach. And while we were in Myrtle Beach, apparently she got her phone wet and caused a malfunction. The phone was not working. You would have thought it was the absolute end of the world because she did not have her phone. Um, proceeded the next day to go to um, to AT and T to put in to file a claim. I ordered a new phone. It was scheduled to be delivered the next day. Phone came, but it was a defective phone. It didn't work again. You would have thought the world was coming to an end. So unfortunately, my child had to wait an additional two days to get her phone. But just to witness the withdrawal, even in that those few days of not having access to her friends, being able to text or FaceTime or even get on social media, really got me to thinking about the impact that uh, social media and these electronic devices have on people and how we need to unplug. Um, but there's, um, there's this idea that you have to put everything that you're doing on social media. And why is that? I mean, it's almost as if you need the social media um, or social cir circles to help you have this sense of belonging or boost self-esteem. But now we're at the point where our social activity is based upon these electronic devices. How many of you go out to dinner and you can't have a conversation over dinner because you're looking at your phone or taking pictures of your food and taking pictures of where you're located just so you can post and check in and show people, look, this is what I've done. 
we've gotten away from even having real in-depth conversations with people um, because the focus, again, is on social media. So it's it's causing um, many of us, again, to suffer from anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, because we're trying to keep up with the Joneses and what they're portraying on social media, when nine times out of 10, what they're portraying on social media is not reality. It's not their life. You're just getting a glimpse or a snippet um, of what's going on in in an individual's life. So my call to each one of you, especially if you have children, Let's try to limit the uh, screen time of our young people, but more importantly, let's lead by example and try to limit our screen time as well. Um, I often post on social media. Um, I've tried to kind of scale back uh, a bit, Um, but all of us, I, I, I don't want to say guilty. Maybe we are. All of us are guilty of um, having this need or desire to post every um, fragment of, of our lives for other people to see just so we can get a like, just so there's a comment made where we can say, look at what I'm doing. And when we operate in that manner, we're losing ourselves in the true essence of who each one of us um, are and, and, and the gifts that we can give to society. Um, so if we want to address some of the issues um, that are currently transpiring, when we're wondering Why is there such a high rate of depression amongst our young people and amongst adults? Why are we hearing so many stories about young people committing suicide? Why is there no longer that social engagement and interaction as there once was 10, 15 years ago? before this influx of social media um, came our way. We've lost all sense of how to interact and communicate with one another one-on-one without picking up an electronic device, without posting on social media. So my charge to you as we enter into the month of May is mental health. Um, awareness month. So my challenge to each one of you as we approach the month of May in just a few days next week, let's try to focus on taking care of ourselves in terms of um, minimizing the amount of social media that we participate in or engage in um, because it is definitely causing us to um, have changes in our mental, behavioral, you know, in our emotional health. So I want you to join me starting May 1st. Let's kind of reduce the amount of time that we spend on social media. Let's look at how much time our children are also spending on social media. And if you just have to engage, make sure you are engaged in um, viewing something of substance. Find an educational podcast, video podcast to, to look at or Something that's more of substance versus constantly being glued to our phones 
and on various social media platforms. Um, it's addictive and it is really changing the landscape in terms of how all of us deal with um, our mental and emotional well-being. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment um, to kind of share my thoughts and perspective in that regard, um, because I think it's very important for us to begin to take a closer look at what is causing um, so many of us to have so many um, issues related to anxiety and depression and just um, mental health um, issues in general. Um, I am always going to be an advocate for promoting self-care. And this is one way in which we can exercise some level of self-care that does not cost a dime. It is also a way for us to begin to um, take some level of control in terms of um, the content that our children are watching and viewing on social media day in and day out. We've really got to get a handle on this situation because it is impacting the way our children behave. And that is also part of so many of the issues that we have in our, in our communities because our children are influenced by what they see on social media there is a disconnect with reality because all they see are these influencers with money or who seem to live this glamorous life. And they don't realize that that is not reality. So it's time for us as a community to get back to reality and try to get a handle on um, what's been transpiring what's been transpiring in terms of the impact that social media has had on not only the mental health and well-being of our children, but also on our own mental health and well-being, because we have also been impacted um, by social media as well. It has its um, positive aspects but there are also some negative aspects to social media as well. I could probably go on and on and on in terms of the instant access to information and how there's no level of discretion anymore about what is posted on social media, what's shared or, or things of that nature. And I'll save that for another time. Hopefully at some point in time, once, um, I kind of address this topic again, can talk more in depth with some of the experts, particularly those who are in the mental health field, to talk more in depth about the impact that social media is having, again, not only on our youth, but adults as well. So I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to tune in to this episode of Light It Up. I hope you will um, share this episode with others, but more importantly, I hope that you are subscribing to Light It Up Podcast and tuning in each week for a new episode and see what the topic may be and who may be my guest on Light It Up. So until next time, I want you to remember to light it up and shine bright like a diamond. Thanks for joining me this week on Light It Up. Make sure you visit my website at www.lightituppodcast.com or www.ajinamohammed.com. You can also find me on social media using the handle at Light It Up Podcast. If you like what you've heard, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, I'd appreciate a rating on iTunes, or you can simply tell a friend about the show. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. Until next time, light it up and shine bright like a diamond.